This channel explores the connections between the Old and New Testament, focusing on the overarching redemption plan and messianic prophetic claims of Jesus through a non-denominational Christian lens. If you found this content insightful, or if you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Your comments help steer our channel and make our content better. So without further ado, today I want to take a closer look at a fascinating aspect of scripture that often goes unnoticed. But before we get into that, I want to start off with telling a story from my life, which led me to this. A long time ago, I used to work for TSA. And when I was working for TSA, I had a Bible study that I did with my coworkers. And uh, so we had this big giant room for our break room and then off to the side there was another room and in that smaller room I decided to host a Bible study with a couple friends of mine. Well while we're doing this Bible study one of my coworkers walks in and says and is just kind of like surprised at what we were doing and he asked us what we were doing and said what are you guys doing? So we told him we're having a Bible study and he, he's paused and looked confused for a second and then he was like you mean reading about Jesus? And we were like, yeah. And he said, uh, oh, isn't that that guy that killed people? And when he said that, I was a little taken back. I looked at my friends in the room and then uh, I was like, no, I don't think we're talking about the same guy. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that Jesus guy, he, uh, he, he pushed some kid off of a roof and uh, was afraid that his mom would find out and so he breathed life into his lungs to bring bring that kid back to life so his mom wouldn't get upset and mad at him and i was like i don't i don't think we're talking about the same jesus i've never heard that story before and so he's like yeah yeah it's in the bible pull it out and i'll show it to you and so i don't think he was expecting it but i reached into my backpack and i pulled out a bible and i handed it to him and i was like i would love to see that story because i've never seen it before and admittedly I haven't read the Bible from the first page to the last page front cover to back cover something I do want to do but I haven't done it yet so I was curious but I was very very skeptical and so when I handed him the Bible he flipped through the pages and when he couldn't find it he uh, handed it back to me and said you must have the wrong version I said well the real version that I know about you know is the English Standard Version, but even if it was the King James Version or the NIV, I think they're all, they all don't have that story in them. Not the canonized Bible, anyway. So, over the next couple of weeks, we interacted with each other. He started to treat me differently. So, sometimes he would just hold the door open for me and say, here you go, holy man, come on in. Or, he, you know, he would call me names or just kind of make fun of me. And after two weeks, you know, at first I thought it was funny. I, I didn't really pay much attention to it but after two weeks then I started to get a little annoyed so at one point I pulled him aside and I and I start talking to him and I said man what's what's your deal like what's the problem like what do you have it with Christians and it was just me and him in the hallway kind of talking and he was he said and I'll never forget he said you know it's you Christians you you just you just you're just trying to catch us. You know, you dangle this little worm on a hook and you expect us to eat it. And like, you know, I, I'm, I just, I don't buy it. And so I stopped and I thought to myself about what he was saying. And then I started to get visibly upset. And I, and I said to him, I said, so in your scenario, Jesus is the worm. So you're saying that Jesus is a worm because all we're doing is, is we're offering you Jesus. And so you think that Jesus is a worm. Uh, and I started to get upset and he, said, he started to backpedal. And so I said, no, I, I didn't say that. You said that. I never called Jesus a worm. You did. And I said, no, yeah, you did. You did. You said that we try and dangle something in front of you. And that something is Jesus. And you, you know, you're calling Jesus a worm. As I'm saying this, I hear the Holy Spirit tell me he's right. That's it. That's all I heard was, he's right. And I stopped and I probably looked really confused. And I, and I, I looked at him and in the process, he was trying to smooth things over with me. But I, but I kind of interrupted him while he was doing that. And I said, you know what? You're right. It says so in scripture. And then he kind of looked at me all confused because I went from angry, and passionate to, you know, 
telling him he's right. And he was kind of confused. And he said, what? <laughs> and I said, yeah, it says so in scripture. Uh, and then I started to have like a, a revelation. And, and as I'm having this revelation, I'm telling him, I'm like, how do you make fertile soil? You put a worm in it. The, the worm eats decomposing flesh and transforms that into fertile soil. And we're called to be the fertile soil. And the parable that Jesus told us about the rocky soil and the fertile soil. What makes fertile soil? Worms. So without worms, you can't get fertile soil. Jesus is the worm. And, and then uh, I said, you know, how, how do you catch a fish? You take a worm and you crucify it on a hook and then you take that worm and you baptize it in water and then you pull out a fish. We're called to be fishers of men. How do you catch fish? You catch it with a worm. Jesus is the worm. And I'm, I'm getting really excited and I'm, and I'm talking to him and he kind of looks at me and, he, and then he says, well, well, Jesus had sex with Mary Magdalene and worms have sex. So how do you, how do, how do you, uh, if worms have sex and Jesus is a worm, then Jesus must have had sex with Mary Magdalene. And I, I, I stopped and I was really confused and I was, and so then I told him, I said, worms are hermaphrodites. That doesn't fit with the, your analogy. And so he kind of got confused and he just walked away. Well, two weeks later, I'm sitting on my couch uh, just reading the Bible in my living room, and I come across a passage in Psalm 22. And I want to read you this passage in Psalm 22. It's a prophetic psalm from David, and uh, a lot of people say that this psalm is speaking of Jesus on the cross, and there are a lot of reasons for that. But we're going to key in on verse 6. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by humankind and despised by the people. So, this word worm actually translates, and I've, I've highlighted it here, because it translates into scarlet and worms. It's kind of the same way orange is translated. Orange, fruit, orange, color. This is a picture of these scarlet worms they kind of look like little peas at the end of their life cycle what they do towards the end of their life cycle they crawl up to a tree and they affix themselves so firmly to the tree in the process of giving birth to their young they excrete this red scarlet fluid over their young in the process of dying this picture here of the worm crawling up to a tree, affixing itself to the tree, is just like that picture of Jesus. So I was so blown away by this uh, picture of this worms, the, the crimson worm. And so I started looking into it. And I have a bunch of different resources if you guys are interested in looking into it as well. This crimson worm went missing from Israel for thousands of years and in 2021 the manufacturing of the unique red dye for the third temple began here's another one from 2022 crimson worm dye a key element for a red heifer sacrifice developed in preparation for the third temple june 2022 this is from the Oxford Academic Bioscience, but basically what this talks through is how they found this scarlet dye, the historical background, the research history, the biology and life cycle of the worm. It's just, it's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So as we've been hearing about, and, and everybody's been focused on the red heifer ceremony, one of the key elements in the red heifer sacrifice is this crimson dye. So, a direct correlation to Jesus, for I am a worm and not a man, despised and rejected by the people. It, it, it's such a beautiful picture of Christ. Quick backtrack to the story. I did go back to uh, my coworker and I opened up the Bible for him and I showed it to him and I said, look at this. 
and I showed it to him and I, and I had him read the verses in Psalm 22 and he was blown away. And I told him, I said, had we not had that conversation where we discussed this, I would have never, ever found this out. So I appreciate you talking with me and, and sharing with me what the issues you, you have with Christianity are because that led me on this journey to discovering this. And look, right here, it says, Jesus is a worm and not a man. And it was, he was blown away. And he could see that uh, that Psalm 22 was talking about Jesus, even though it was written hundreds of years before Jesus was arrived. It was clearly talking about Jesus. And so later, he, uh, my, my coworker came to me and he said, you know, I grew up and I was, I was in the Catholic Church, nothing against Catholics. But he's like, you know, I, I, the, the, the nuns wouldn't answer my questions and they would slap my hands and they would get at, mad at me for talking in class. And I never liked Christianity from that point forward. And if you're one of those people that have had a bad experience of Christianity because of something that has happened to you or some kind of event, and I hope this helps you in your journey. Have a wonderful day.